This is an extension of Lesson 2.3a. We're going to be using deductive reasoning to solve logic puzzles. I have two puzzles for you. We have four previous videos that you can click on the description to watch them if you need to. The key to solving logic puzzles is to systematically work through the given information one piece at a time. And as we read each clue, we make any conclusions that we can and mark the diagram carefully before going on to the next clue. Sometimes you have to go over the clues a few times. And we've learned to use deductive reasoning to analyze the truth values of conditional statements. So we're going to mark the diagram by using an X to indicate a definite no and a dot to indicate a definite yes in this logic puzzle we're going to do. So if you look, I've got a grid here and I've got some clues. I've got some given information. So the puzzle says find the name, age, and favorite superhero for each kid. We're going to put an X in a box for a no way and a dot for yes, definitely. Okay, so our first clue that's given is that Brian likes Spider-Man. And if we look, we've got Brian, Sarah, and Tom for our children who are 6, 8, or 10 years old, and they like Batman, Spider-Man, or Superman. Now here we have the ages again so we can cross-reference them. It actually helps when doing these. So Brian likes Spider-Man. Well, that's given. That's telling us. So that's a yes. So we look for Brian, we look for Spider-Man, and where the two pieces of information intersect, we're going to put a dot because it's telling us that he likes Spider-Man. If Brian likes Spider-Man, then he doesn't like Batman. So we can put an X here. And he doesn't like Superman. And if Brian likes Spider-Man, then we know Sarah and Tom don't. So we can put X's for them. So just from that one piece of given information, we've been able to fill in five boxes. Now it says Tom doesn't like Superman. So we already know that he's not Spider-Man. If Tom does not like Superman, we can put an X here. That means the only thing that Tom could be is Batman. That's the only one left. If Tom is Batman, then Sarah is not Batman, which means the only thing Sarah could be is Superman. Now we need to figure out their ages. It says the youngest kid likes Spider-Man. So Spider-Man is the youngest. That would be the six-year-old. So that's a yes. And if the six-year-old is Spider-Man, then the eight-year-old is not. The ten-year-old is not. And the six-year-old is not Batman or Superman. So we could put X's here. We can also say... The six-year-old is Spider-Man, so we can do the dot here for six-year-old and Spider-Man and fill in the X's for the other box because they can't be the six-year-old or Spider-Man. Our last clue is the kid who likes Superman is eight. So here's Superman. It's telling us that that's the eight-year-old. So that's the yes which means if Superman is the 8-year-old, it's not the 10-year-old, so we can put an X here. And if Superman is the 8-year-old, then it's not Batman, so we can put an X here. See? That means the only thing left is Batman being the 10-year-old. And we can complete the grid here. Tom is Batman. So Tom must be the 10-year-old, which means he's not Sarah as the 10-year-old, and Tom is not the 8-year-old, okay? Which means Sarah must be 8. See? Sarah is 8. So now we've got the whole grid filled out. We know the name, age, and favorite superhero for each kid. Brian is Spider-Man, he's six. Sarah is Superman, she's eight. And Tom is Batman, and he's ten. We actually used deductive reasoning. We used a step-by-step -step process. We used facts. Okay? This one's kind of famous, and you may have heard this one before. And it's usually told with a farmer and a chicken and a wolf and some corn. This one is a farmer has a goat, a wolf, and a cabbage. So it's basically the same thing. It's just a little bit different animals and vegetable, okay? So this farmer, he needs to transport all three across the river. 
His boat only has enough room for himself and one other item. So he can't take two across or all of them across. He can only go one at a time. Now the wolf is going to eat this goat if alone together, and the goat is going to eat the cabbage if alone. So how can the farmer get everything to the other side of the river? Well, we can use a network to solve this type of puzzle. A network is a diagram of vertices and edges. Vertices and edges. And it's also known as a graph. We're going to let F be the farmer, G is going to equal the goat, W is going to equal the wolf, and C is going to equal the cabbage. So an edge is a curve or a segment that joins two vertices of the graph, and a vertex is a point on the graph, okay? So we're going to use an ordered pair to represent what is on each side of the river. So we're going to begin with, on the left side of the river, is the farmer, the goat, the wolf, and the cabbage, and there's nothing on the right side. And we want a result of having nothing on the left side and everything being on the right side. And the pairs WG, wolf, goat, and the pairs GC, the goat, cabbage, won't work because the wolf will eat the goat, the goat will eat the cabbage. We draw a vertex and we label it with an ordered pair. We draw an edge and a vertex for each possible trip. When the path makes a bad pair, no more edges can come from that vertex. From each workable vertex, we make more edges and more vertices that represents the next trip across the river. When we, when we get to a vertex for nothing on the left and all of them on the right, our network is finished. So this sounds really confusing. Let's take a look at what this looks like. I want you to imagine that the comma in this is the river. We have everybody on the left side of the river. We'll pretend the comma is the river and we need to get everyone on the right side. So what's happening is if we try doing the farmer brings the wolf over, he's going to leave the goat and the cabbage together, and that won't work. If he brings the cabbage, cabbage over, he's going to leave the wolf with the goat together, and that won't work. So, let's come down the middle. The farmer will bring the goat over and leave the wolf and the cabbage together. That will work. Sorry about my focus here. That will work because the wolf is not going to eat the cabbage. So, what we've done is we've slowly progressed down and found all the possibilities. By using a complete solution network like this, we see all possible solutions instead of just trying to figure out one way. This way we see all the solutions. So what's happening here is he's brought the goat over, okay, but then he's come back. So now he's with the wolf and the cabbage. He tries bringing the wolf over, but he can't leave them together because that wolf is going to eat the goat, so that won't work. He tries bringing the cabbage over, but that's not going to work because the goat would eat the cabbage if he left him alone. So what he does is he brings the goat back with him to the other side. So here the goat was on this side. He brought the wolf over, and now he brought the goat back with him. Now... The goat is back on the left side. He brings the cabbage over, and the goat's left alone. Then he can come back and get the goat, and they're all on that side. In this way, he's brought the goat over, and he's brought the cabbage over. He can't leave them together, so he brings the goat back with him. And then he brings the cabbage over, leaving the goat on the left side, and then he brings the goat over. Okay? So this is what happened. All right? So here we have our river, we have our farmer, our wolf, our cabbage, and our goat. He cannot take this wolf to the other side of the river to, at first because that's going to leave these two together and he'll eat them. He can't bring the cabbage over because then the wolf is going to eat the goat. See? So the best thing for him to do is bring the goat over. He goes back across the river and... His options are, if he takes the wolf over, then he brings the goat back with him. See? Then he brings the cabbage over and goes back and then brings the goat over. Here's the second option. So let's go through each one of these and we'll wrap up the video. So he's brought the goat over and he came back. Now he's going to take the wolf over, but he can't leave these together. He can bring one thing with him each time he goes back and forth, so he's going to bring the goat back. Now, he's going to bring the cabbage over. 
he's going to go back, and then he brings the goat over. See? So what happened was he brought something over, came back, brought something else over, but brought the goat back with him. That way they weren't left alone. So he can still take the goat over. See how both options have that as the first and going back as the second? And then he can take the cabbage over but bring the goat back, bring the wolf over, go back, and then bring the goat over. See? So the trick to this was he had to bring the goat back and forth so that it wasn't left alone with the wolf or the cabbage. Okay? So all we're doing is using logic and deductive reasoning to solve these. Our next lesson is biconditional statements and definitions 2.4. So try doing some logic puzzles. It'll actually help you think and teach you how to think, okay, and be a problem solver. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye.